it's, it's worth returning to this point that the, the defense committee itself, of which that parliamentary secretary is a member, unanimously voted to call on the government to not increase the rent on the forces personnel. But you know, this parliamentary secretary can actually be heard at the meeting instructing her own side to uh, just vote for the motion. It's not binding, you know, it just gets reported to the House. It doesn't really mean anything. So this is sort of the level of, of uh, you know, kind of double speak that we see from members of the, uh, of the Liberal caucus. They will literally vote at a committee to urge their government to take a particular course of action, but just shrug their shoulders and know that it's, well, it's not binding and the government won't, won't do it. It doesn't hurt us to, uh, to, to unanimously vote. They wouldn't have the courage to oppose the motion if they actually agreed that it was only fair to raise the rent to our, uh, our troops. But uh, instead, they, uh, they went ahead with that. So there is a cost of living crisis in this country, and it affects the members of the Canadian Armed Forces. We're down 16,000 personnel. There are 10,000 more that are under, under, under trained. These are the best of the best, Mr. Speaker. Our troops, I've, I've, I've met them. I've been on uh, and, and seen them uh, deployed, and they just want to serve. They are, they are the best, and they are let down by this government constantly, and this, this base rent increase might seem like a trivial matter it might seem small but it's not mr speaker and uh, the, the the they could signal to the members that they support them by not increasing their rent the honorable parliamentary secretary to the minister of national defense thank you very much uh, mr speaker and certainly i want to thank the member opposite for his questions and certainly uh, it gives me a great pleasure to uh, be able to speak on the opportunity uh, that how we are uh, supporting our Canadian Armed Forces member. Uh, so let's be quite um, strong in saying that I think collectively uh, the member opposite and myself, we believe uh, that CAF members are the backbone of our defense team. They're responsible for defending us, our values and our country. It is our responsibility as elected officials to eliminate as many unnecessary challenges as possible for CAF members and their families ensuring that when military families relocate, they actually don't face additional and unnecessary burdens because they're dedicated themselves to serving our country. We are committed to supporting armed forces members so that they can have an affordable, safe and comfortable housing. We have undertaken a variety of initiatives and investments to meet the needs of forces members and their families when it comes to housing. Committed to investing $475 million over 10 years to build and renovate military housing across our country. This funding will help support our plan to construct approximately 650 new units over the next five years on base with the greatest housing demand such as Borden, Esqualmont and Gagetown. But we know that more needs to be done. And this is why, through Canada's updated defence policy, our North Strong and Free, we are committing an additional $295 million over the next 20 years towards the military housing portfolio. And this funding gives us the resources to continue building and upgrading existing housing. It would also help us establish a Canadian Armed Force housing strategy to guide our housing efforts in the short and long term in order to help CAF members and their families. Another very important aspect, Mr. Speaker, is child care. And when I visited our military bases, I heard a lot about that. Child care is a priority for military families. In our updated defense policy, we invested $100 million to improve access to daycare and child care services on bases at an affordable price. These investments will allow the Government of Canada to offer forces members and their families affordable, safe, comfortable housing today and for years to come. Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada also implemented protection measures to guarantee that armed forces members pay fair and equitable rent prices everywhere in Canada, whether they live on the base or off base. For example, the Armed Forces Housing Agency studies and readjusts every year housing prices 
Capital placed a 25% cap base on gross household income for CAF members currently living in military housing. To become more responsive to the needs of CAF members, last July our government replaced the post-living differential or the PLD with the new Canada Canadian Force Housing Differential or the CFHD. Um, Mr. Speaker, I can go on and speak about the initiative that we're taking, but I also wanted to take this opportunity, as always, to thank the wonderful world uh, that we are here in Canada, but I want to say thank you to our members, their family, for their effort here at home and also abroad, abroad and I know we will be there in supporting you. Merci. The Honourable Member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, in May, I asked this Parliamentary Secretary if they would reverse the rent increase, yes or no. She didn't answer the question then. I repeat the question. I re revisited this question. She spoke for four minutes without answering the question. So we will just take it as no. They are not interested in reversing the rent increase that they placed on the CAF trip. Fine, that's a, that's a choice. Uh, amid a recruitment and retention crisis where we have heard at the committee repeatedly that the horrific condition of base housing is a factor in people leaving the forces. She spoke in her, in her remarks about their commitment to build 600 units over five years. There are 7,000 people on a waiting list right now for housing. That answer isn't going to cut it.